Jack Stuss Homestuck is a self-indulgent podcast featuring a heart player encouraging you to be self-indulgent too. Welcome home. Hey everyone, welcome back to Live Laugh Stuck. Previously, Jack says Homestuck. Yes, I'm aware my intro and outro still say Jack says Homestuck, but those will be fixed by the time my anniversary episode rolls around. Hopefully, I say that. I hope it does. I have other stuff to do this week. But that's also when all my other URLs will have updated. Hopefully again. <laughs> Twitter and Tumblr have already been updated to Live Laugh Stuck, uh, all one word, but... This is all entirely beside the point. The point being, it's time to review Tavros and Aradia's Pest Request Routes. That's right, Aradia's route. The only thing Hussey is right about. For those of you who haven't played or watched the routes, you might not understand what I'm referencing. If that's the case, go play or watch. I really enjoyed these routes, and I actually have my own stream of it up on YouTube, which you can find by searching Live Laugh Stuck or clicking the link in the description. Or you can just wait until I talk about it. But first, we gotta start with Tavros. I feel I start almost every Pest Request route review out like this, but as with most Homestuck characters, I never thought too deeply about Tavros or Radia, and uh, talking with people about both and playing these routes have really made me appreciate them more. Maybe one day I'll think about characters that aren't Striders or Lalans or Karkat or Kanaya without being prompted. But, you know, these are good promptings. It's, it's made me think a lot. So with, with Tavros, I think we really got to explore him as a three-dimensional character. I know some people were upset Vriska was featured so heavily at the beginning, some people even calling this Vriska 2.0. But... So much of Tavros's character is wrapped up in his relationship with Vriska that not including Vriska would seem strange, and I don't think they included her too much. And especially since this Vriska is the one I've been wanting. <laughs> She's shitty and mean and, and beyond frustrated and so sure she's right and Everyone else is willfully blind and naive, and, and she makes understandable points. I can see where she's coming from easily, but that doesn't make her right. And you avoid Tavros's first bad end by coming to that conclusion. I'm not sure how I feel about how obviously we came to that conclusion, but I think I might just be oversensitive after Briska's route. I mean, because because there's a difference between noticing what the writer is doing and the writer hamfistedly driving a point home. I think it's something we have to see reader think through so that one, those who might be less familiar with Homestuck proper could understand why Briska is suddenly mean or still mean or acting like she is and uh, too, so it wouldn't seem like Reader was just using the, well, this person is the one I'm trying to befriend, so I have to side with him, sort of logic. And three, maybe as a reassurance that, yes, they do understand Friska did some bad things, actually, whether as a reaction to any criticism or as something that was planned. But Friska leaves after you side with Tavros, and we focus on him again. I really, really like his second bad end. You try to make Tavros feel better, so you take him to Prospect and let him fly around, and then are shocked when he wants to stay there. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanted to note that we do get this glitch of Tavros and Prospect before we wake him up, and I've seen the theory that this is an image of Jack killing Tavros. Uh, I mean, Carcat's awake, and 
he only wakes up right before everyone dies. So what if while everything we're doing is happening, Jack is parallel to us, fulfilling his part of canon? I thought that was really interesting, and I can't wait to see what comes next with all that. But as far as Tavros's bad end, it's heart-wrenching how completely understandable it is that Tavros wants to stay in Prospet, especially after his recent interaction with Vriska. Vriska is changed and better now and doesn't have to answer to her losses and she still acts the same toward him. The friends he has who want to help are still too far away to do so. He is still one bad run in away from a calling. He is still in an environment that tells him he's worthless. And here he can fly? Here he doesn't have to worry about all that? Of course he doesn't want to go back. I also think this was a really important moment for Reader's characterization. Reader isn't here to make people the healthiest version of themselves. If Tavros is happy sleeping his terrible life away, then, well, Reader accepts that and moves on. So yeah, this end was really painful and meaningful because damn if I wouldn't have made that same choice at points in my life. Tavros's good end, though. So you help him become an independent person, where he doesn't have to rely on Vriska's version of help or struggle to do basic things by himself. You get Kanaya to come and help Tavros, and I think that's a really cool friendship dynamic. Kanaya also lets you know that she knows you fuck shit up regarding them going into escrow because space players know what's going on. Also, the escrow tech borrowed from... Well, I'm assuming it was borrowed from Feferi, but, you know, we see Kanaya talking to Aridin early on in the comic, so borrowed from one of the sea dwellers. But th the tech is cool. It's just literally turning resources into other resources in a much simpler way than we see happening in Escrub. I... I don't know. I really like bringing Kanaya in to give Tavros independence. I also really love Kanaya having an excuse to leave because she forgot her clay dress in the oven. Overall, I really like Tavros's route. We absolutely got to understand and sympathize with him more, but we also got that certain line of behaviors that a lot of people find at least low-key annoying, which, well, mostly, if not entirely, gained from the trauma he's experienced, can still be frustrating to deal with. Like, him assuming Kanaya has a crush on him because she came and helped him? That's a new Tavros, though I do like Reader hinted at, like, no, trust me, you're not her type. So I think that is meant as like a wink toward her being a lesbian. I also like Tavros having absolutely zero resistance to Reader wanting to help him and get to know him. Like, he says no or like puts up a barrier like at like when first asked. But that quickly crumbles with the second ask or with no second ask. Just like, oh, well, if you insist. And that was hilarious. And what else I really like about the route is that we get Vriska being Vriska and an acknowledgement that she is indeed Vriska. Which if you listen to my last two reviews, you know I was more than a little anxious about. Now, Aradia. Talk about a route I wasn't expecting at all. Not that I had a lot of preconceived notions for either of these routes, or for almost any route, but Aradia really came out of left field, and it was so fucking good. I'll be honest, I was a little nervous because we got previews of a live Aradia, and I had no idea how that was going to work out. But there was absolutely no reason for that concern. We started out with James Roach taking shots at Hussey and the correct side of the fandom by having Aradia tell us her name is pronounced Aradia, which is a baller fucking move, even if I disagree. Then our first choice is only one choice, forcing us into the bad end with Ghost Aradia and then rewinding us to the beginning showing us the second option, and Aradia politely making a note next to that option so we know to click on it. If you don't click on it and you still go with the first option two more times, Aradia gets exasperated with you and just ends the route right then. 
when you finally make the right choice after getting that little Easter egg, we get fucking God Sierra Radia. So vaguely future, and I'm assuming post epilogues, Aradia got a Feferi to get the horror terrors to make us a fucking dream bubble so she could talk to us about all the chaos we're causing and help out. Unfortunately, Reader is clueless as shit, so Aradia has to gather up all of our past and doomed timeline selves and merge us with them. So now Reader remembers Friendsome. Just not the very end or the very beginning of past her quest. So basically everything dealing with being with Doc Scratch. And then it gets very sad. In the last bad end, Reader tries to find their friends. But no matter what they concentrate on, no matter what they try to cling to, to have that like emotional connection, find friends and people... All they find is the void, not like, you know, an empty hive with no one there or empty clubs or anything like that. Just the void. So Reader chills out with a horror terror for a little bit. Who who gets who gets his cuddle on while Aradia is like, sorry, bro, this is out of my expertise and just. Let's Reader chill out for a bit before rewinding us back to the beginning to make the good choice. Which the good choice is great because it primarily involves you all deciding to say, fuck the powers that be and cause some chaos. Which I really like this bit about canon. Though now that I think about it, I'm not sure if this happens pre or post choice. But there's a little nod at fans who are tired of what Pumpkin and and the game and etc. talking about canon relevance. And as one of those people with thoughts about canon, it was appreciated. But anyway, they go on to fuck with canon and give reasons for some inconsistencies people have noticed, like stealing Vriska's lipstick and and giving Karkat size he shouldn't have yet. I didn't notice these inconsistencies because I don't think, I guess. (laughs) But so this all like fucking with people and seeing like reality crack around him gets reader riled up. And I know I just said him, him, I mean them. I'm sorry. I default to him a lot. I do it with my own non-binary characters that I craft from nothingness and make them non-binary with they, them pronouns. I still default To him, it doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. We'll move on. Reader gets riled up, ready to tear the whole of Paradox Space apart. And Aradia's like, cool, great, love the energy. You still have to make some friends, though. And Reader's like, fucking, fucking really? We did all this and I still got to, like, make friends like I didn't just do all this? Fine, I guess I'll make more friends. Okay. But... It's fine, because Reader's gonna love the characters we still have left, because I mean motherfucking Nepeta. Nepeta is coming up! I'm not even sure, like, Nepeta is my favorite out of, like, the rest that are coming up, but Nepeta is definitely the one that Reader is going to get along with the most, I'm, like, pretty sure. Just Reader and Nepeta is going to be a great duo. I'm really excited. But yeah, Aradia was great. I am glad that she came here to watch and help everything break apart and piss off those pulling the strings, which I'm pretty sure is supposed to be about Doc Scratch, but, you know, I feel like there's also hints about Epilogue Dirk being in there, but maybe I just want to shelter him from everything and push him to the side and please no one think about Dirk. Doc Scratch is the problem here. (laughs) But, um... But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this this long-term plot continuing to happen. I, overall, these routes were great. I was nervous about parts of them, but there was no reason for me to be because they were handled wonderfully. And and yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the routes that we still have to come out. So, Wednesday is my anniversary episode where I'll talk a bit about how I got to where I am and the results from the listener survey. So I will see you guys then. This podcast's theme is Dirty Dirt Kenny and was created by Domi, who could be found on SoundCloud as Domino Thief. 
The art for the podcast was done by Abby, who you can find on Twitter at Space Arby's. Unless it wasn't. Shout out to my patrons, Kansas Just Got Gayer and Jacob King. To become a patron and get episodes up to five days early, along with other benefits, go to patreon.com slash sociallyanxiousdragon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. You can find links to that and more in the episode's description, on the podcast's Twitter, JaxDoesHS, or on JaxDoesHomestuck.com. Please remember to rate this podcast on iTunes and share with your friends. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to be a little selfish. <laughs>